This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. We'll bring you the biggest entertainment stories and definitely analyze them for you. My name is Elsie Godwin, and today is not business as usual. I've got my co anchors, of course, and um, we have a special guest because, like we said earlier in the week, this today is for us to talk about all the content we consumed in the month of January 2020, that is music-wise. And to do that with me is definitely my co-anchors, Ife Oluwa Oshanke, Nimi Dekombi, and a very controversial music journalist, Joey Akan. Yo, hey. welcome to hey. <laughs> For some weird reason, I don't know, in Nigeria, once you go controversial, mm -hmm. you never go back. Yeah. Are, you, are you planning on going back? I don't understand what, for me, I don't understand what controversy is. I just say the truth. Mm. Okay, I'm, so how has the truth work, worked for your brand so far? Do you think it has helped you positively or negatively? Two things. The truth has given me status. The truth has given me a life. Mm -hmm. The truth has being the cornerstone of all the work I have done and the work I will do in the future. So um, it's given me a lot of blessings, but it's also, uh, it also has its curses. Mm -hmm. um, you will be, you would not be trusted because you can be compromised mm -hmm. and or people don't know what would compromise you. So that puts people off. Also, a lot of people will hide, shit, will hide stuff from you because half the time, they're wondering, what if I let this guy in and then he, he sees Same. things that are in my skeleton. Everybody has something they're hiding. Mm -hmm. And then so, and then you make a lot of enemies. Mm -hmm. You make a lot of enemies, but you also make a lot of friends. So I have mm -hmm. friends and I have a lot of enemies. Mm -hmm. On the public side, the public will love you. They will hate you also, but guess what? They will respect you. Mm -hmm. so. So yeah, in all, it just sums itself up as progress of some sort. So. And the industry, and they love you. The industry, mm -hmm. the industry think I am necessary. Okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. they've come to agree that you're necessary. Yeah, they think I am necessary. They, they respect me. Okay. I have a lot of respect in the music industry. Um, I am respected, they all pick my calls. Uh, some people fear me, which, <laughs> which I find weird because I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a con ball. Um, and then, but generally, they love, they love to hate me. Sometimes it swings, the pendulum swings. Like the truth is like, um, I say it all the time, it's like sharing something. So it's a love and hate situation. It, yeah, now would it ain't rich, then go talk to the share and win. Mm. Yes, so today it favors you, tomorrow it doesn't. So you love me today, you hate me tomorrow, then you go back to loving me mm. reluctantly again. So Are there people you look up to in the industry before you said this? Before? Doing exactly what you're doing now? No, I am my blueprint. Mm. Yeah, not a lot of people I am, do what I am you my, do. So. No, I, made, I took music journalism, I brought music journalism into this country. I took it mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of kids, a lot of people who because of the work I have done, because of my very existence, they have been able to choose this as a career path. Mm -hmm. They look up to my work, uh, you know, I've done some training behind the scenes. And so, but in this space, this is not new in other markets like the US, the UK. This is not new, this is what happens. You consume content from musicians. There has to be literature, there has to be a better understanding of it. There has to be, there, there are stories so who goes in to tell the stories? Mm -hmm. Not entertainment stories where people, celebrity stories are that where people worry about, you know, what car they've bought. Mm. The art, the creative process, mm. the pipes, the consumers, it's all one huge ecosystem. And who, who's telling the stories? So I made it mainstream, I made it a thing. I made it uh, possible that people would even consider the existence of music Talking about in making it mainstream, how lucrative is this in terms of finances? It pays me. It pays you well or <laughs> just it, to survive? It, pay, it, pay, it pays me enough to, to live a good life. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well said. Uh, yeah, it pays me enough to live, a, to live a life of dignity. So how about internationally? Who do you look up to? Internationally, I have, you might not know a lot of them. There's a guy named Craig Jenkins. He's in, uh, he works for The Vulture. There is Elliot Wilson, uh, uh, Elliot Wilson. you know, works for himself, works for Tidal. Uh, there is, they have a bunch of, there is um, Yo. Yo works at DJ Booth. He's one of the best writers I have, I know on earth. Mm -hmm. And so these are the people that I 
look up to consume their work. Cherry Hu, she's really good with statistics and the business angle. So she never does the creative part. She just focuses on the business and the analytics of music. So these are the people you look up to. These are the people you consume their work. And then you create what you can here. OK. So I would ask that how important is what you're doing in shaping the music industry in Nigeria? I think nobody, nobody should be, especially when you make art, when you when you create, when you make art, musicians create art, they feed it to the people, the people love the song, and if they do it enough, um, the people develop a link to them. They, they generate some form of connection. This connection cannot be properly, this connection creates a lot of opportunities. There's, there's, there's a link here, so what journalists do? Journalists, journalists in the original sense of it, uh, mm -hmm. they come in, they mine the artist and all the music, and then they, create stories, they commodify it or formalize the process and then they share it. At some point, after they've gotten insight and knowledge, they become analysts. Mm -hmm. After they've gotten insight, context and knowledge, they become analysts, they become reviewers, they become critics. Also, not as a job in itself, but as an attachment, as a bonus to telling stories. Mm -hmm. And so what my work has done over the past years, it's it's made more people, it's, 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 it's educated people on the music yeah. industry. It's, uh, that's for the public, that is. It's educated people on the music industry. It's allowed people to understand their music more. It's given people more, more, more knowledge can, about the arts. It's also people outside, business-wise. I know people who said, who have told me that the only reason why, they, why they've come into this country to do any sort of music business or when they try to map out the music business, what they do is they just come to my work, mm -hmm. or they just call me and they're like, "Hey, you've done all this work. So they want to know come what's give going me, on. tell me how the music industry mm -hmm. is structured." So yeah, in that sense, yes, I've also made people sit up. Um, um, I've also made people sit up. I've done a lot of investigations. Mm -hmm. um, made people sit up. You know, so it matters to a certain degree. You know, it matters. But eventually, once you tell stories and you tell it long enough, you. Well, your major job is documentation, and have you documented it well, right, and accurately? Yes, and that's it. All right, everyone has had an opinion since Bonoboy lost the Grammy, mm -hmm. so we'd like to get your take on that, weighing on that. Do you mm -hmm. think he deserves that um, award, or it was okay that he lost? Well, it wasn't just time yet. Well, it wasn't just time. It's a nuanced conversation, and when people talk about the Grammys, they need to understand how the Grammys work. The Grammys um, is an academy, academy that's made up of technical people from yeah. music, producers, rec uh, recording artists, Sound songwriters, writers. technical people. And it's an American award. Yeah. It's a local award created by locals to service their industry. And so after a while, they're like, huh, there's something good happening over there. Let's just, you know, Let's just throw in, just give them a little window. It's like building a house. And at some point, you say, OK, ah, this house is nice. Ah, let me get a guest in. And then you get a guest in. And then this guest starts demanding that you apportion an entire room to them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not our award. That's what people feel to understand. The Grammy has no business with you. Yeah. They are just extending a hand out of courtesy. It's like the to spy. Yeah. 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 So. Bonoboy, yeah, he's done a great job. In the past um, in the past year, two years actually, Atlantic Records, lots of money, lots of structural support, well-oiled PR machine. They've put him on all the platforms, three, three late night shows, uh, performances in the U US and the UK, uh, continental promotion, mm -hmm. you know, different territories. So the campaign too has been good, you know. And everybody expects it to happen because the significance of it is because, you know, pop, our pop music needs more recognition. Mm -hmm. And getting a Grammy means somebody is certifying that, yeah, yeah this, this happens. Really but you also have to look at the people voting for this. These are white, predominantly white yeah. people. These are predominantly, I know a couple of people from the Grammys who have that vote, who has hit me up and said, hey, I voted for Bonneboy, but this is why Bonneboy did not win. Um, a lot of other people really, really like Salsa. And Angelique Kidjo, have you listened to the album? People feel to... People fail to understand how good it is. It's a salsa album dedicated to Celia Cruz, one of the most legendary artists. And 
it's beautiful to hear that music. It's, mm -hmm. it's great. It's very technical. The mixing was good. Same as Bonoboy. Bonoboy had great music. But what would the technical people voting for this? What do they want? They don't know your story. They don't mm -hmm. know the context in which you make your music. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it means for you, for what Bonaboy represents. What they do know is this music comes from Africa and this music comes from international spaces. And so pit this against this, pit this against this. What do we like? After listening, they'll choose this for their so reasons. So would you say the power of story behind Ajani Kijo's um, album was an edge? The what? Power of storytelling. The power of storytelling. Bonaboy told better stories now. Let, let's be mm. real. <laughs> let's be real. Okay. It's, it's, not, it's not storytelling mm -hmm. per se. It's not storytelling. It's more technical. Do... In terms of marketing, the story, the storytelling for marketing was great. He created an entire character, named himself the African mm -hmm. Giant. Mm -hmm. Had like really, really uh, had milestone moments where he tried to live out his African giant hood. No, but he said something about the person Angelique Kijo did that album after that Sam Celia. Yeah. And how she is already known She's, and the story about her life. It's it's so it, it was it was that weak. Wasn't an the edge. marketing also was weak. It was it wasn't it wasn't an edge. It's the music. Music is salsa. Mm -hmm. Salsa is predominantly Latino music. It's mm -hmm. you can find it in Spain, you can find it in other places. Okay, I know so, we need to get into the music. But yeah. before that, South is so you tweeted that recently. Um they just um, signed it to Universal music. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean for what does that mean for Saudi Soul? Yeah. It's the biggest signing, uh, it's the biggest deal from East Africa so far since the Africa to the World campaign started. This yeah. is the biggest deal from East Africa. What it means is that Universal is going to fund them for yeah. whatever. They've not released more details. I know the back end details, but it's really confidential. But they've not released more details to the public. But what I can say is, Universal is going, they're going to be putting a lot of money. They're going to be investing in Saudi Soul. They're going to be. Uh, giving them studio spaces, they're going to be giving them their full Features, net structural yeah. network support. They're going to, you know, they're going to try to give them access to ARs that can create music that they could push all over Africa. It's an African deal. It doesn't leave this continent. It's mm -hmm. just saying, hey, you guys have done enough. Guess what? We have money and we have structure and we have uh, the pipes, good pipes. So let's let's create with you. Let's amplify and then we split. That's what it is. Okay, let's go on a quick break. But when we come back, we will promise to get right into the music. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling all right. Bye. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Akpala music is for mature-minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And we are looking at music, 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 and all that has gone down in January 2020. And interestingly, it's actually a lot. Mm -hmm. So before we get right into music, I know I promised, but now Mi Campbell says something. She said, or she insinuated that we need an Afrobeat um, category Categories. in the Grammys. Do you agree? Why are you laughing? It's laughable. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's funny. It's okay. funny. You need to explain it's, it. It's, it's really Why funny. is it funny? It's okay. really funny how people can speak from a place of emotion mm. and a lot of people would take it really serious mm. and have conversations about mm. it. Naomi Campbell, you know, good friends with Bonner Boy, good friends with the culture. She interacts with, she engages with it for a while. She's she's seen as you know adjacent Afrobeat evangelist of some sort, mm -hmm. even though her, her, she makes money from fashion. Mm -hmm. But ask Naomi Campbell to pull out the stats that back Afrobeat getting a a, a genre, a category in the Grammys. 
number one, what has Afrobeats done? We are at the very best a fringe, fringe unknown genre. Yeah. We've had cases where we've you know found a way to infiltrate due to diaspora this that that that. But when the how many of our artists are successful in the US? How many of our artists can do the numbers that let's say let me pick up one random artist from the Latina from Louis the Latina Fonsi. world? No, not Fonsi. Fonsi is a big deal now. Uh, not even Daddy Yankee. Those are OGs. Uh, let me say uh, Maclan. That's a rapper from uh, Brazil. Maclan. Uh, How many of our artists can do Maclan's numbers? How many of our artists can do Danny Ocean's numbers? Uh, Bad Bunny. Ozuna, mm -hmm. how many artists can do this? We can't, we don't have that. So for something to be considered to change the structure of the academy or their, their, the format of the academy, they need to have earned it. Afrobeat is still in, it's still a child when it comes still to crawling. music. Yeah, it's still growing, there's potential. We see this potential. Uh, when our artists, you know, when this potential is sold to us, it's not sold as potential. It is, it is sold as achievements yeah. via yeah. Instagram, sure. via press releases. Sure. And so in our head, our, our understanding of these things is skewed. And so we can show up and go to another man's house or uh, your ward and say, we need a category. Why? <laughs> because you people, we people have sang uh, anybody. Now. What's the future of Beyonce? Now? We need to move on. In peace. Thank you very much for this. I think this is okay. what we we need first to see all along. The song on our for this month is Troy Boy featuring Adekunle Good Tranquilizer. Wow. Well, yeah. I like Tranquilizer. It's with Adekunle Good, you can never go wrong. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's, that's the beauty of Adekunle Gold in anything. No, great can. record, great record, decent song. But with Adekunle Gold, um, once you put Adekunle Gold on any record, it just adds an extra oomph. So I'd say Adekunle Gold saved it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, saved it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Actually, like the song. So you think without Adekunle Gold, it's won't have Without Adekunle Gold, yeah, it would have, you know, good buzz. But the dynamism that Adekunle Gold brings is what clinches it for me. That's mm -hmm. the deal clincher. Okay. You want to say something about it? Well, I'm not a fan of Tranquilizer, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but like you said, that Dickon Legold's um, diverse input into the song gave it a vibe, but it's still not 100 as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I'll, I'll place it like, I'll give it a 50%. I think what I'll just say about this song is that it's very nice to see Dickon Legold doing something different from mm. his Oriente, Ire kind of vibe. This is like a very, very different vibe than what we are used to from Dickon Legold, and he was able to pull it was able to pull it off, so I feel like that is... But, but over, over the past year, if in case people haven't noticed, Adekunle Gold has one of the best stories or mm -hmm. success stories in this music industry, Definitely. in case people haven't noticed. He's mm -hmm. transitioned from being a an urban high-life artist to mm -hmm. being a pop star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, he's got the hair now, his looks are changed, go out his hair, all of that. Yeah. He's, making, he's making more inclusive music. The horns I think he's switching his up this yeah. 2020. Yeah. He's being No, last year, it happened last year, in front of everybody, nobody was noticing. He started, he took out the drums, took out the horns, and started making pop, uh, global pop music. Mm -hmm. Before you wake up, reggaeton, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then he, yeah. Sure. Think yeah. about. We didn't notice really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's what has happened for him. So he can do all of these things. He's a really super talented artist, and yeah. I'm grateful that he's trying to push himself and bring out you know different facets of his art. So one thing I love about him is his strategy, his marketing. Like mm. he he wants to connect with his fans. He's really adequately good that sends out a newsletter. Copy, mm. copy, copy, send out a newsletter. Co what? Copy, copy, did you copy? Right. Okay, I don't want to respond to that. <laughs> Let's just move on to the next one, which is from Mr. 2K's um, EP, Concentrate. So I, I think this EP dropped last year, but he dropped the video for Concentrate this yeah. year, January 2020. Have you seen the video? I've not seen the video. I mostly, for, to be honest, I, I don't watch videos that much. Mm. Um, I can stumble on them. Because, but I mostly focus. The only videos I watch are the videos that have an impact on the record. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a video like Whiskey's Fever now, switch the uh, song from uh, a regular song to one. Because it's marketing. So mm. if your video is not adding to your record, then why would I want to watch you and a lot of women just frolic? Uh, nah, none of that. Um, so, concentrate. Decent record. 
it's not Mr. Tuki's best work. Mr. Tuki has not exactly been on the ascendancy since he left Crafton. Mm -hmm. uh, but to see him still putting out content is admirable. So, you know, I can't say much about that other than, you know, well done, you know. <laughs> Good job. Keep Any doing it. Any 2K fan, just save him. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mr. 2K is concentrated. I think it's a great record, but like he said, it's not his best work so far. I still like Uno Like Batatin, mm. yeah, because it has a message to it, but this is like doing what everyone, everyone is doing. Does, do you yeah. understand? So I just feel like, okay, you can do better. You, you're an artist that you can actually put out messages out there, but he's doing what, practically what. And when he came on the show, I asked them the same thing, that why are you doing this right now? Mm -hmm. Why are you not for you know what you were doing like what is when he said mentioned grafting he had a message in his he had message in his lyrics but right now it's like shake up your you know what i mean exactly the lyrics were to be, to be honest i don't i don't really look for i don't think it's, it's fair to artists to expect them to have music Content. with message in why? it why it's music man the first this might sound too deep but I, I like to reduce things or simplify things. The very first person who ever created music in his life, what did the person create? Melody. Mm. Mm. That's all the person created. What about melody with lyrics? Check all the, all the classics that people will respect. Mm. Handel, Bach, Mozart, uh, all mm. of them. What did they create? Melodies. Melodies. Hmm. And then one day, any one day, someone decided to throw lyrics into it. So, but at the heart of it is the creation of music, of melodies. Lyrics, the voice is just an instrument. It is an accompaniment to the melody. Uh. So at every point in time, when they ask you, uh, this song sweet, it is not the lyrics that gets to you. If the song mm. uh, had a better melody, you won't look for lyrics. Uh. True you will not look for lyrics. It's only after it has hit you and you're like, oh, this is good. That's when you go, ah, we think they don't. But, Joe, uh, Joe, yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe has Joe. a very, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> very melody. Now, now, with what we have <laughs> no, now, what's sustainable? Who it, creates the melody? Is it the producer or the artist? It's depend on, on the song. No, but there's no one way to make a song. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've, I've worked on music where, uh, there's something also I do in the back end, a and r I make music. I've worked on music where, the, the, the music came from an artist being inspired and just recording on his voice note and saying, hey, this is the melody I need. Sometimes you go to a producer and say, I need it, I need this, let me hear your beats. Mm -hmm. From there you can get the melody. Uh -huh. So there are different ways, or sometimes some people make finished songs and they bring it to the artist, uh -huh. and the artist says, hey, let's, let's do a deal. Either you pay your money or you get some percentage of it while I still settle you in some other way, uh -huh. and I get this record. So. It's a lot of things, but at the heart of it, at the heart of music making, at the heart of music consumption, is melody. And so if an artist decides to throw message into his lyrics, all well and good. But to expect that from the artist, Okay. Um, that's you projecting. I'm trying not to bring in somebody into this conversation, but let's move to the next one. Chike, um, Boo of the Bullets. Now, this album, um, I'm quite confused. I don't yeah. know if it has dropped. I don't know if it's upcoming. I don't know what exactly is going oh, on. Oh, it's just yeah. restricted you in Nigeria. There are yes. only like five songs on the album. Five or four? Of, five or four. And most of the songs are songs that he dropped before exactly. previously. So. Except Nakupenda. Which but if you go to his page, he tells you it is out now. Is out. Go and stream. Well, I checked all his platforms. I checked his DSPs and it's not there. Instead, I've seen like old songs that he's dropped before. Yeah, mm -hmm, exactly. there, but all the others, they are not available in Just this region. In this region. In this region. In I don't know region. who's pushing for him. I don't know who's handling his, his uh, distribution. Yeah. But whatever they've done, they need to go and tick Nigeria too. <laughs> 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 they have to. Because it's his primary mm. market. So, GK, I think we'll be mm. skipping you to you because. What, um, Nakupeng? What did you call it? Nakupenda. You like it, I actually. I love the song. Mm -hmm. The song is beautiful. The melody is beautiful. And the lyrics, it's very, very soothing. It has this like, East African vibe to it. Mm. It's a regular chick here, as far as I'm concerned. Goodness. OK. It's okay. just a mood killer. I love Amen. <laughs> I love yeah. Amen. Amen is a good song, mm -hmm. yeah. OK. Um, we have more, but it cannot be in this episode. So definitely look out for the next episode. And thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can watch this conversation all over again by visiting our YouTube channel and subscribing at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always go to my co-anchors, 
Nimide Kombi Ifolu Oshunkeye and Joey Akan for doing this with us. He's still here. And uh, my name is Osi Godwin. See you on the other side.